since I keep getting comments from people doubting the ability of this material to do any panel damping inside a speaker, even though it's clearly shown in the video where I did it, I thought I would come up with a different test, you know, a way to show it a little bit more directly. So I've set up this thing right here. Hang on, let me put these things down. Once again, I'll be testing the same three things, fiberglass, polyfill, and rock wool, all equal weights. Okay, rock wool takes up the least space, fiberglass takes up a bit more, and polyfill takes up the most. All right, as I already established, it's useless to compare them by volume. You have to compare them by weight. So the test setup is my speaker here. The side is open, that doesn't matter. I'm just using it as a source for the sweep, the sound of the sweep. It's produced by this speaker. It is meant to make this bowl vibrate. So here's the speaker, here's the bowl. There's no direct connection. The bowl is sitting on a piece of foam to isolate it from the workbench as best as it can. The speaker is also sitting on a piece of foam that isolates it from the workbench. The idea is that the cone will make the bowl vibrate. You'll be able to see exactly how much the bowl is vibrating because I've got my accelerometer clipped onto the side here and it'll show up on the computer. You'll be able to see exactly where it's resonating and how strong those resonances are and how long they last because I'm just gonna concentrate 100% on the waterfall this time, which shows decay time, how long the thing is actually ringing. That's the important thing. What damping does is it stops things from vibrating and it stops it over time. So the better the damping works, the, the quicker it'll stop the vibration. Okay, so I'm gonna run the test, but the first thing I need to do is, is run it with this thing empty, with the bowl empty and the path in front of the bowl empty, and that'll be kind of like the control, the thing that we'll compare everything else to. So you can see in the plot that it's ringing pretty hard at 200 to 300 hertz, very strong resonance there. In fact, it doesn't die out after what is it, 800 milliseconds, that's almost a second. Okay, and then you've got a, another few up higher, but it's gonna be that big one down there that's the most audible and the one you would want to treat the most. So the first test will be with the polyfill. I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna put it between the bowl and the speaker so that the sound waves have to pass through the polyfill to get to the bowl. And you'll be able to see how much damping is achieved just by putting the stuffing in the box without it touching the panels at all. As if that's possible, you can't put the stuffing in the box without it touching the panels, but I thought it'd be interesting to show directly how much the stuffing affects the sound that's coming from the cone as it's traveling across to make the bowl vibrate. Got that set up and I'll run that test and you can see the results here. And if I compare it to the first one, you can see that there is a slight reduction, but it's mostly up higher. And it really doesn't have much of an impact on that big resonance at say 270 or 260. So then I took the polyfill and I put it inside the bowl so that it's you know making maximum contact with the bowl. And then I ran the sweep again, and you can see the results of that. It's obvious to see that putting the damping material inside the bowl had a major impact on how long the thing stays ringing for, especially that big resonance down at 270. It also had a significant impact on the ones that are higher up as well. So the next one that I did was the fiberglass, which is right here. I took that and I put it in front of the speaker, in between the speaker and the, the bowl, and I ran the sweep again. And that's what you're looking at right here. And when I compare it to the same test with the polyfill in between, you can see that there is a significant reduction. So the fiberglass is more effective at reducing the amount of sound that reaches the bowl when you put it between the speaker and the bowl. And then I did the same thing as I did with the polyfill. I put it inside the bowl and I ran the sweep again. And here you can see the results of that. So right off the bat, without even looking back, I can see that that is way better than the polyfill did. Big reduction right across the whole thing. And remember that these are the same weight. 
okay? They're not the same volume, but they're the same weight. So weight for weight, you can use less of this to get better results than this. The next one I did, of course, is the rock wall. Once again, I put it between the speaker and the bowl. This one has a slight disadvantage in that its physical size is significantly smaller than the fiberglass and the polyfill, so it doesn't block as much, like it doesn't cover as much area in front of the cone. When I compare that to the fiberglass, I can see that the fiberglass is slightly more effective. And when I compare it to the polyfill, the rock wool, even though it's taking up a lot less space, is more effective than the polyfill. So then I put it in the bowl and I ran the sweep again, and that's what you're looking at right here. And when I compare that to the fiberglass, it looks like the fiberglass is doing a better job up higher than the rock wool is, but the rock wool is doing a better job with that, you know, big 270 hertz resonance. It's cutting it off really quick. Even though that's a very small piece of rock wool, it didn't make much contact with the bowl at all. So that tells me that probably the best thing to do overall is combine these two materials. Okay, if you can get the rock wool into the lower part of the speaker where the, where the actual woofer is, now put that in there so it's not obstructing the cone or, or blocking the port or anything and then fill the rest of it with fiberglass, you'll probably get both the best of both worlds. If you're looking for the best possible damping you can get from this kind of material inside a speaker box. Now the advantage of using this, because I had a lot of people saying, well, why didn't you try this? Why didn't you try the other thing? I don't have it. They're not really commonly available. A lot of people said something about no res, which is a stick on stuff with foam on the inside. Um, I don't have it, so I can't test it. Uh, you know, you'd have to specially buy that to use it. These materials are very common. You can go to your home center, local home center, and get these any day of the week. And then if you want to stay away from those two altogether, you can always buy polyfill. You just need to stuff more in the box.